Those of us that have responsibility in cybersecurity roles are currently experiencing a perfect storm of pressures, with our businesses accelerating their digital transformations and increasing the attack surface, compliance and legislation growing their demands and the fines if we fail to comply, plus cybercrime growing in sophistication and even nation state actors being a direct threat to every business. Then we have the major disruption to ICT architecture that COVID-19 represents, resulting in high complexity when trying to deliver your security policy to a hybrid workforce. Adding to this, we're then presented with a, a slew of new buzzword transformational security service models, which we're all encouraged to embrace, such as SASE, the Secure Access Service Edge. When Gartner coined the term in 2019, they were suggesting a very sensible evolution of network and cybersecurity services alongside the evolution of the corporate network that SD-WAN was bringing. It was meant to take five years at least to mature. They could not have predicted the massive acceleration of service adoption that COVID-19 caused in 2020 and that catapulted enterprises into the cloud for their applications and data while moving their entire workforce to remote working. After some years of accelerated adoption of this type of service model in the real world, however, both Gartner and Forrester have published new frameworks that more address the reality of how the service providers, vendors and customers are deploying SD-WAN and cloud-based security services in the real world. Gartner, for example, have responded with new quadrants that treat SD-WAN and network firewall as one element in WAN edge services, and then a separate security services edge or SSE quadrant that takes care of the other cloud security services that were in the SASE model. Forrester have now created their own take on SASE in their zero trust edge wave which assesses these emerging technologies. But how many more acronyms do we need to learn before we can simply deploy a secure and performance service stack that meets the challenges of the modern ICT architecture? In the end, there are three core elements of these frameworks that provide the key cybersecurity outcomes that we all need right now. Firstly, a secure web gateway that allows you to deliver the corporate internet security policy to all users, no matter where they work, for safe usage of the web. Why trombone to a firewall in a corporate data center or an HQ? Or even worse, often people use insecure VPNs to get this service. Which brings us to the second core element, a zero trust network access solution, replacing our old low security VPN access with a service that ties individual users to individual applications rather than providing unfettered access to everything on the corporate network. Then thirdly, a cloud access security broker known as CASB is more and more being deployed, providing applications and data with trusted granular control, including services such as data leak protection, since in the end, security and compliance is really all about that data. Each of these services makes perfect sense in the hybrid working digitally transformed and more insecure world we find ourselves in. And they will be absolutely key in dealing with compliance, legislation audits, and the rising queries from our customers about how secure we are as part of their supply chain. Other cybersecurity elements of these frameworks also make perfect sense, but budget, resource, time constraints, may delay their adoption. Having remote browser isolation to run risky code in the cloud rather than in a browser on a corporate machine is very sensible. Having a secure DNS service that only sends users to safe places on the internet is also very sensible and a fundamental protection. Some of these services are quite fundamental changes too to the architecture and taken together can seem quite daunting. So how do we move your business forward with these initiatives in a prioritized and manageable manner? For this journey in the real world, most businesses first move to SD-WAN, then move to a cloud gateway service, and then add CASB and DLP to their cloud transformed corporate services. Then finally, replace VPNs with ZTNA.
However, our business transformation and initiatives may prioritise things differently. So now we come to the real key for cybersecurity professionals. How do we successfully bring these benefits while minimising disruption to the business? In the end, our security transformation roadmap will be individual to our business, depending on our different needs, our current cyber maturity, and what our investments have been to date, making sure that we have the partner who can support that future journey is going to be key. Ensuring that their choice of services and vendors doesn't paint us into a corner for the length of the contract we have with them. Having the flexible approach to develop either full SASE deliveries or more separate SD-WAN, SSE or ZTE models. This should allow for the adoption of the right services at the right time for our businesses. In this highly complex cybersecurity world of interconnected, high-pressure deliverables, we need to make sure that we have a partner on our journey who understands our business, guides the right choices, as and when it works for us. This way, we can all take full advantage of the very beneficial cybersecurity outcomes that service frameworks like SASE bring. If we work together in a pragmatic manner, we can use these powerful models to remove the risk of cloud services and hybrid workforces and also address the more serious threat landscape while supporting the business with uninterrupted services. So in these challenging times, I wish you good luck on your cybersecurity transformation, no matter what service model or framework you choose to embrace.